Richard, what are we cooking? We're going to do turkey on the rotisserie. You're going to copy me? I'm going to copy you. You've got a couple of variations on your YouTube already, so you've asked me to do another one. Yeah. So this is my take on uh, rotisserie turkey. So, Brilliant. Yeah, you want well, me, you you want me to kind of get on? Yeah. So we've got, a, we've got a five kilo turkey, uh, about 12 pounds in old money. Um, been out of the fridge a good half an hour, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to season the inside of the cavity. Uh, a little tip that I always like to share is to put your seasoning, your salt and pepper, into a little dish so that you don't need to be, um, just a little health and safety thing, you don't need to be contaminating your, your salt and your uh, pepper grinder while you're doing this. In here as well, I'm going to pop in some chopped onion. Oh, brilliant. So that's going to go in. Oh, there we go. A little bit didn't want to make it in the final cut, but there you go. So a little bit of chopped onion in there. I've got two, I've got one, uh, one large chopped onion in the bag here and um, I've got a, a lemon that I've chopped up as well. So we put half of that in first. Then what I've got here is I've got, um, got a little bunch of fresh sage, oh, rosemary and thyme. You smell that? Mm, beautiful. With your herbs, especially the woody ones, just give them a little rub in the, in the, when you're about to use them just to see how potent they are. Um, just because at various times of the year they're, they're not quite as strong. The rest, of the, uh, the rest of the lemon and the onion goes in and then we put the rest of the, uh, the herbs in there as well. The onion and the lemon, for me, add flavour from the inside of the bird, but they also, because they're a moist, because they're kind of, you know, they're a very juicy um, fruit and vegetable, they will give off steam as you're, as you're cooking it. Over the top, just to help things crisp up a little bit, I'm just going to take some oil. That's going to go over the top. We're just going to give that a rub all over. This is going to do two things for me. It's going to help crisp up the skin. Make sure you get it into those wings as well. Um, there's always, it's always there's sunny, always something when you. When there's always there's always an uncle who likes uh, a, a nice turkey wing or something yeah, like that. Right, make sure yeah. you get the make sure you get the oil all the way over the back as well because those thighs go all the way around the back, and then it's the rest of our seasoning, just goes on. And all I've done with this this is um, this is uh, sea flakes sea flakes uh, molden sea flakes, um, and I've just done a 50-50 blend of the salt and freshly cracked black pepper. So again, all the way around the back, pick up those bits that have kind of just fallen onto the board. But the, the, the oil will help that stick. Yeah. Okay, how are we looking so far? Oh, good, good. And the great thing with these rotisseries is that they'll take about 20 pounds, won't they? They're they will. Really yeah. tough, yeah. really tough. And also, the, we're doing it on the charcoal, and, and the rotisserie for the charcoal really, because you get this, you can't really see it at the moment, we'll show it in a, in a second or two, but you get an extra collar, don't you? So it just lifts yeah. well, the top of the lid. Also do um, beer canned chicken like that by having that collar high. Absolutely. Same. Perfect. Absolutely. Um, so if you're going to put this on the rotisserie, you need to string it. And a really simple way of stringing it, this might look like a really long piece of string, but always better to start with a, a larger piece of string than you need. Start with the uh, turkey kind of facing your legs towards you and put the middle of the string underneath the back of the breasts and underneath the back of the crown. Bring that up across the legs and then um, come in and around, cross over. And we're going to bring that up underneath the two legs. Cross that over in the middle. Cross that over in the middle. Just got a little bit of herbage popping out there. Cross it over in the middle, go around again. We want to keep these legs nice and together, nice and tight. And then what I do just to help things hold in place is just drop those strings in between the two legs themselves. Um, then we go around the parson's nose just to hold the legs, to hold the legs down, shall we say. Um, and that will also keep everything in the yeah. cavity um, nice and um, secure. And then if, you can, if I can just borrow a finger, yeah. you can just pop that on the knot. I'm just going to tie that in a simple double knot. As I said, I had a larger piece of string than I needed to. Um, I, got this, I got the string from my butcher, but you can quite easily use parcel, uh, parcel And they're really string. useful, the butchers, for string, aren't they? Because they it's very difficult are. to find sometimes. And actually, it's not that expensive. No, you can not. get a big roll. It'll probably last most people a good, uh, good few years. The point of the tip yep. goes to first. I've already got, the, um, I've already got one of the... One of, the, uh, one of the forks on. So that goes through the neck, goes through the cavity, out underneath the feet, the ankles, and, uh, and above the parson's nose. And then it's simply a firm push into the back of the crown. That's the important thing, isn't it? Is to <coughs> really hold it in there. Yeah, you don't want this slipping around. Right. You, wanna, you wanna make sure that it rotates evenly so that you get nice, yeah. even heat. And then this one here, just make sure that you've got that nice and straight. And then that pushes in as well. If you push this in too far, especially with some of the gas uh, rotisseries, the, um, the thumb screw is just a little bit of a, an L shape. Yeah. If you push it in too, too far, you might just have problems securing that in. What I also want to do is just make sure, so I'm just going to loosen off both thumb screws. I'm just going to make sure that my spit, the actual spike, is even on the yeah. to the turkey, so that the, the turkey's uh, in the true fine, center Richard. of the barbecue. 
So now, this is ready for the barbecue. We've got our barbecue behind me. And it's lovely and warm today because we've, we're doing about six recipes in I one go. I think it's like so about 10, but anyway. Um, yeah, it's nice and warm. We've got lots of barbecue <laughs> set up today. So, um, But yeah, this one's going to go on the charcoal behind me. We're going to slot this. Uh, the spike goes through the hole in the collar of the rotisserie and then into the motor itself. Just line that up. The other side sits on here Perfect. and then we're going to put the lid on. Obviously making sure Set that we that. turn it on. Yeah, I, so, I did wonder. There you go, rotating yeah. away, lid on. Job done. Perfect. That is going to take about, I would say, two and a half hours, but we'll come back in about an hour or so and give it a quick Have check. It. Yeah, lovely. All right. Wonderful. Richard, that turkey must be ready by now. Let's have a look. Yeah, let's turn that off. So take probing that. that, using the temperature probe, you're going to look for... Oh. What temperature are we 82, at? 83. 82, perfect. So yeah. that's... Um, Checking the deepest part of the um, of the legs and the breast as well to make sure that all four points of the bird are yeah, cooked. If, as long as they're all over 75, we are good to go. Yeah. So let's just um, lift this out of here. Now, one thing that we haven't mentioned is that we didn't foil this. No, we didn't need to. Um, we didn't need to because of the temperature that the the barbecue was cooking at. But if you're if anybody has a turkey at home and, and it's coloring up too quickly, if they want to and it's not cooked, if they want to stop it from colouring up anymore, if you just take a long sheet of tinfoil and just wrap that all the way around the bird and just kind of cinch it in, it will stop it from colouring up anymore, but it will allow it to carry on cooking through. So if we just carefully slide that out. This is how I'm impressed my <coughs> wife last year was cooking this turkey. Yeah? Like this. Yeah, perfect. How many, uh, how many people were you cooking so for? So this year I've got to cook for over 50 people. So, so a bit of pressure on this year. A little bit of pressure. Is there any chance we could save this one till Christmas Day? I suppose we're going to cut it, yeah. aren't we? I think you just need to do your own. Oh, thank you. Richard. Don't take mine for it. Don't take any credit <laughs> from mine. So all the gubbins are still inside, all the lemon and the onion and all the herbs. So if we just take this string off, um, normally you'd let this rest. And the, uh, the great thing about resting the turkey is that you can actually let it rest for a good hour and a half. Put it on a warm serving plate, yeah. tin foil over the top. A couple of clean dry tea towels as well and in a warm place in the kitchen and um, that really won't take any harm whatsoever. Um, and that will also give people a bit more time to get their roast potatoes and everything else yeah. sorted out for the Christmas dinner. So to carve this, you just I'll stand out of the way while you're doing that. You just carve down um, you just carve down inside that leg just to kind of separate the leg from the breast. And then same as any any poultry, there's a there's the breast bone running down the centre of the crown. If you just go off centre slightly you can run down the side of that, um, that breastbone. You'll hit the carcass underneath, and then you just work your way. This is going to be a bit hot because we haven't really let it rest. I oh, know. Oh. But um, it's not your fingers, is it? So I just have to get on with it. So we're just going to cut down, slice through at the front, and then if this will just carry on all the way down to the wing. Just teasing that away. This is a lot easier when it's rested, trust me. So we'll get that all the way off. You can see, look at that meat in there. Absolutely beautiful. You can see all white meat, no pink meat in there whatsoever. To carve the breast now, you just slice down through. Everybody gets a nice little bit of skin. That is really toasty. Mm. Um, what other things would you want to do on the rotisserie, maybe? Well, I'm, what have I'm, you seen? Well, this year I'm going to do... Um, I'm actually going to do lamb as well, so I'm okay. looking forward to that. I've got a couple of rotisseries going. Okay. I guess you've got enough barbecues here, haven't you? Well, that's right, yeah. So if you look at, look that, at that, look at that. Absolutely glistening with the, with the juices that are still in that bird. Nice and juicy. Again, roasting it outside, you get the moisture, the dampness, the damp air coming into the barbecue from the great outdoors. We have perfect weather for using our barbecues. Um, and then to take the leg off, just pull that down, tease down with the tip of the knife until you get to the hip joint and then pull that back and then you can just pretty much when it's as tender as that you can just take the whole leg off so it's so nice when you see it being carved like that because you obviously know what you're doing I'll make a that's one thing I can't do is carve properly well it's just that is superb it's just when you take the whole breast off you don't have the issue of kind yeah, of carving into right. the carcass and, and ending up with little pieces that you know as the person that's carving it sometimes you end you up giving end those up, to yourself end up using so we try this let's try a little bit we've got some chipolatas uh, wrapped in bacon some pigs in blankets we've got some homemade cranberry sauce as well but uh, let's mm. tuck into that. Oh. How is it? Tender. Oh. Beautiful. So juicy. And that is the beauty of that. Mm. 
And that will make any Christmas day really, really special. That is a showstopper in itself. Yeah. You lift the lid off that. You can't. You you really can't go wrong. Now the only thing is, what are you doing Christmas day, Richard? Because you know, if I get into problems, I may need to get you down here. If you have problems on Christmas day, Russell, you give me a call. Thank yeah. you. No Thank problems, you. we'll sort it out. That was great. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. That's cooking turkey on your barbecue.